Hey everyone, Corey here coming in to uh, do this week's channel message. And this one is for goodness, this is the last week down to the last few days of April. We're almost into May. April has been a, uh, a wow month, a big month. Um, lots of lots of things occurring, a lot of challenges, um, a lot of the good, bad, and the ugly. I feel like this month has been filled with so much very unpredictable, very unpredictable behavior. Very much of a little bit of everything has transpired um, within this month. And now, of course, we're in the last week. So we have this last week of the month that is, you know, that comes with its own its own energy. So it has, um, we are in retrograde. We do have some retrograde energy that is happening right now that's going to be happening for another little bit. So, you know, don't, don't resist the need to kind of bring it back, slow it down. Even though there's been lots of conversation about go, 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 you know, you're going to run out of time. We're like April's done. Like all that good luck energy is gone. No, it's not. There is, remember this thing called unlimited. So that unlimited does exist. And there is, you know, there is more of everything that we need. We don't have to be in desperation to get to a specific place to achieve a certain, you know, a certain thing that we may not be fully ready for. This week, I want to really dive into missing a nail. I want to really dive into the, into the human aspect of, of spiritual, of, of our spirituality and, and the human aspect is what I'm channeling through. And so we have a lot of this humanness and, you know, learning the power of being able to really, truly embody your humanness, to be present with it, to be present with um, your own sense of, of self is so important. And, you know, I've learned so much, not just about me, but about, you know, the world and about, about perspectives and collective energy and all of those things and being able to channel is it's an absolute blessing in so many ways because channeling moves us into shifting from being able to rely on like our senses and mediumship when we're doing sense and we hear feel sense all those things that we use to uh kind of take action or to kind of guide us through whereas in in channeling this through and in channeling these messages it's like you're not connected to the physical body at all. Like there's no real connection into the physical body and you're relying upon this wisdom that comes through on a greater consciousness, uh, but also learning the power of being able to trust what may not make sense to anyone else, what people can't understand, what nobody knows about, about you, like those type of things is, is kind of where we go to get this information. So just imagine when people assume they know who you are and you can feel that frustration inside and you're saying, nobody understands, nobody gets me, nobody knows it, but everybody's assuming and they're making accusations or they're making up stories or, they're, or they assume they have this you know, sense of knowing that this is what you think, this is what you feel, even if you don't know it. Well, that's okay in the physical realm, the physical world, it's not really okay most times, but it's like, that's a that's the that's a, a perception. That's what you think you're getting, and it's connecting to your own emotions, right? It's connecting to your own memories, and that's not that's not how handling works. And and so our human and the evolution and evolving our own human emotions, the emotional spiritual growth that we have been talking about so much, that has been coming up for us everywhere is truly about being able to be in relationship with the soul and the soul's knowledge. And the soul will be older than our souls, billion times older than our human. Our humans on its like first go around, right? Like it's like, this is it. This is, humans are still newbies and there's still so much to figure out. There's still so much to learn. There's just so much we don't know. And so we can have, think we have all the facts. We can think we know things, but do we really? And so we've really, you know, lay, put labels and identities and definitions and, 
defining things and having to label things and identify things. And it has really, truly, it works to a certain degree, but it restricts us in so many ways. And so as we sit down with this last week, and as this week is also a week I'm planning for my upcoming classes, we can working with the energy of the, the dragon energy and the elements is, is this sense of, of, oh, how do we put this? It's a sense of, of not being afraid to, to sit with that, which is the pieces that limit yourself. So sit with those pieces of yourself that limit you, that it's like, well, that's not true. That can't be true. That's bullshit. Like that kind of stuff. And asking yourself, you know, if I could, if I could let myself be free of my mind and all the knowing that I have known, what else is there for me to learn about myself? What else is there for me to know about myself? What else is possible? And so a big part of this conversation comes into being able to sit with the fact of not being not being afraid of our own darkness, like not being afraid of our own, our own, you know, not so pretty self, our false self, our not true self, being able to sit with that, being able to look at that, because it's so easy to point out that within somebody else, and then point that finger, but it's not so easy to see it within self. Even when you say you are, most times people are not. And, and so this week's energy and where it is, is speaking of that on such a level, because we have an opportunity that, you know, say the angelic realm don't have, we can, we can keep kind of learning from those mistakes. We can make mistakes. We can learn from them. We can grow. We can, we can evolve. So life, life is the human is here to allow life to be that experience. And we're here to come to life. We're not here to, as my brand says, we're not here to just exist. We are here to learn the power of being alive and learning the power of, of living. And some of those things, if you want to evolve your emotions, is first you got to know, well, you got to know where to place that emotion and where it belongs and, and recognizing that some of our emotional state of being is an innate character, which comes from the, it's innate and it comes from the instinctual self. But if the instincts, if, you, if you're in survival mode, if you're in fight or flight, if you're in fear, if you're in that state of being or that, that freeze that, right, and you're doing the please, the fix, that type of thing, or being the martyr, then a lot of times that instinctual self is not correctly operating. So our primal instincts, right, we're not able to, we're, we're in fight or flight, so we're, we're, we're running, we're we're jumping, we're attacking, we're in that energy. And that's a whole part of what is trying to, what is what we're trying to evolve, what we're here to evolve and to grow is to really truly assess, to release and let go of some of that old, you know, warrior kind of energy that we've had, but knowing that we can utilize parts of ourselves that we've not yet awakened to, parts of ourselves we've not yet known. So, you know, sometimes in all relationships, there may be a whole lot about other people in our relationships that we haven't yet gotten to know and don't care to know because as long as people stay exactly as they used to be, you'll be happy as long as people do as, as, as that conforms to what society thinks, then we'll be happy, right? It's like, so as long as I'm happy, it doesn't matter how miserable somebody else is. As long as it makes me happy to be correct, to be right in, in my view, in my thought and how I see things. So this week, you know, in this slower energy is opportunity. This week is grounding us. It's rooting us. It is giving us opportunity to explore, to, to see, to not to be afraid to sit with that self, to not to be afraid to question how many times we've been on the run, how many times we've been, you know, making those assumptions, those accusations, how many times these things have been happening in our own lives and to, to ask yourself that. And to sit with that and, you know, so this development of psyche, of, of the psyche and advancing means that, you know, there's a lot of magic within us and there's a lot of beautiful, magical moments waiting to be awakened. And we have a lot of, we have a lot of magic right now. And, and that magic can work for us instead of us trying to force it. 
When you try to force something to happen, things will never work. When you allow things to happen, beautiful things unfold. So there is a there is a shift and it just feels like, you know, being able to bring online that enthusiastic, that excitement energy without being, without being, you know, looking over your shoulder for being excited. That sense of everything you were deprived of as in your child energy, everything that, that was not provided. And this is ties into self-esteem, which I seem to be talking about a lot lately. I think they have a lot of to say about self-esteem. And I don't think we'll have true confidence as a, like in a strong, true, true confidence until we restore that sense of self-esteem, which is huge because we don't have to wear a mask. We don't have to put on the cloak and we don't have to turn, we don't have to, to, you know, make somebody a character in our story so that we can, so that we can validate having a story to tell, right? It's like, it just is, life just is. So there is a there is the energy of of being able to move into and awaken some of these untapped, you know. So some people say, well, you know, I know what love is, I know what joy is, I know what excitement is, but I often say, do you really? So if you've only ever had, you know, if you've only ever been wanting someone to really care, if you've been if you've been in nothing but unhealthy relationships, how do you know joy? How do you know, how do you know you're safe? And why do we seek out that unsafe, right? And so there is, you know, how do you know, how do you know joy? How do you know joy? how do you meet joy? where do you see joy? And somebody will say, well, you know, I just remember like, somebody bought me flowers and it felt so good. And I'm like, but is that's a tension and it gives you a temporary satisfaction. When we bring online that that connection to the soul and then in, and that innate innate self, it's hard to knock us away from that. No matter what else is happening, is there's a knowing within us that you know I can't be here all the time. I can't sit in this place all the time, but I'm aware that it's there and I'm aware that it's coming back. And so. Love is not always, love is not always nice. That doesn't always appear nice, right? Love, when we have to, the, you know, to move from the power of, the love of power or the power of love is that it may not be pretty. It may not be nice. It may not be, it may not seem like it's the right, it feels very kind when sometimes you have to do the right things and, and but you have to do them anyway. Well, sometimes those things, we're called up to those situations and when we're called up to those situations, we have to really go into the power of love and, and turn and remember what we are within ourselves, that we have that we have turned on the lights that we have brought forward so that we can know that we may have to make choices and decisions that is for that is for the truth of of keep bringing, keep feeding into that new sense of the emotional experiences of what you want more of, what you need more of, what you're actually craving, the things that you were frustrated about that you that you weren't getting by, by looking out into the world, but that you're getting within yourself. And so the nine of cups is the card that I pulled for this. And as you can see, you know, the cups are on the table and he's picking up the one, you know, it, this is the one, this is the one time, this is the one moment. And so when I, you know, it's like, this is your, when you're feared into, oh my God, you got to jump because it's going to be your only moment, your only time. And it's like, no, it's not. And so sometimes we got to master the formula. So this gives me a huge reminder of my book that is going to be coming out next that we're in editing right now. And, and the book is called Wine and Chips. But I speak about the grape. And so, you know, making that, perfect formula for the master creator, right? That, that mixes that perfect blend. So when it is that perfect blend of, of everything, it ignites the flame, it lights a flame and it turns on the flame and something just ignites within us. And we just know, and we know it exists, even if it can't exist every day, we know the feeling. It is just like when you walk into the light or when you have been by touched by the angels or 
when you have entered into, I've walked through the Christ-like light and you, and you, you walk through the essence of you, like this, this divine energy, this divine self, and you just know it. It doesn't stay. It doesn't last forever. It leaves, but you never forget that moment. So the moment of somebody giving you the flowers, you remember the feeling you had in the moment, but it wasn't the fact of the, the somebody giving you the flowers. It was what it felt like to be acknowledged or to be seen or to be valued. And in that moment, what it felt like, that, that feeling that you would have had, right? And so how we connect into being able to be guided by the soul is to really truly get back to this sense of the soul has a feeling, the heart has a feeling. There's a knowing that is felt here in this high heart that is greater. And it doesn't get, it's not even a, like, a, it's not always like a, a tingle. It's, it's hard to put into words. So hard to put into words unless you feel this, these moments. And then you just know that that is more of what I want to create in my life. So if you're in a situation where you're not feeling that, if you're in a experience, no matter who it is, that you're, that, that is not, that, that chemistry or that energy is not happening. First, you got to look into you and ask yourself, is it because I'm very caught into the physical of my senses, like, or my, my wanting, my, my emotions, my unmet emotional needs or my, or my deprived sense of self. And so this low self-esteem, is it, is it there or where is it really? Where is it really? Where is this for me? And so there's, and then bringing, bringing it back into, you know, releasing the mind's stories and then seeing something new, feeling something new through, through wisdom. So so my scene is very different from feeling is very different from our five senses. So when I look out and I see, and there is a, you know, a hue of something appearing over here and I'm like, oh my goodness. And then I have to list, then I have to listen without my ears. And it's the feeling of love coming in. It's that feeling of, of this divine presence. And when we feel that divine presence, we can release and surrender so much of the control. And people say, well, how do you know? How will you know? And I'm like, I don't know. I just know when, when the grass turns green, when the flowers bloom, like it's usually something like that. When you, when you'll know you're there, when you see this, these hearts. And when you see those hearts, you're going to go, oh my God, that's exactly as what, what was told to me. I hear that so often if some, someone say, you know, you told me I would be seeing this and you had no idea why. And then I seen it and I was right in this spot and I met this person and it has turned out to be exactly what I needed, but they weren't seeking the person. They just, they ended up in the right place. The experience was ignited that excitement and everything unfolded because like the big bang, like the big bang energy, it is just like this explosion of energy and it just goes out and it just attracts on to all of the right things. And that becomes magnetic and that comes back to us. And so that brings us into the King of Swords. And, you know, he can be logical, he can be practical. He can, you know, really, truly think through his words, but is he, cre does he have the creative mind? Does he have the, you know, is he always just waiting for, you know, it's like, got to get that word in or, or, you know, waiting to share this sense of, of knowing what is he, what is he doing? Like he's, he's obviously, he's obviously preparing for something. He's, his legs are facing one way and he's looking back. So he's, he's got to be certain. He's got to know, he's got to have the answers. He's got to have it figured out. But do we really always have to know when we, when we can really truly trust the soul that is saying, go now, go now. And how do we know it's saying that? It is talking to us some way. It's that some say, I don't know why, but I just had to go. That's it. I don't know why, but I just had to do. I don't know why. I don't know why I just lost my ship, but I just did. And it's like, because whatever is meant to unfold from that experience will unfold, right? And so there's, there's so many things at play here for us. And then we have the magician coming in, which is a one, which says you have everything that you need. 
You have everything that you need within you to be able to, to navigate your way through as we move into May. As we move forward into May, you have everything within you that you need for moving forward. Everything is there. All the pieces are there. Everything is in place. But who moves into May? Who moves into the next week? Who moves into the next moment, the next day? If it's going to continue to be that essence of, of that, that shadow of the self or the false self or whatever that may be, then you know it'll be more of everything that you that you are trying to evolve or trying to grow or you're trying to move beyond. And so it messes, if it is, then it messes with the journey, right? So this is zero, this is the full, and this takes us into you know, ground zero that when, when we're in the ending and new beginning, so in between the end of April and this beginning of May is, you know, it may feel like nothing is happening. It may feel like, well, what am I supposed to be doing? Maybe you're not supposed to be doing anything. Maybe you're supposed to be just, you know, creating. You're supposed to be the co-creator of your life. So maybe you're just meant to keep putting in the elements and the ingredients of being able to be still and being able to be silent, being able to not try to be creating a story or a narrative, being able to just be present and just letting yourself be present and, and just trusting because the fool is in reverse. So it's saying, you know, it's like, you're, you're not really, I feel like it's like, not really, not really like, don't let yourself be fooled by your, by your false self. Don't let the, that inner that inner negativity, that inner, that inner judgment, or the things of the past that are surfacing right now, that are coming back up, that you're having to face, that you're having to, don't let them stop you. These are all temptations. They're all things to get you to, to get back into your feelers, get back into your emotions, into the old emotions to fall back and not to move forward, not to keep moving. And it's like, yeah, no, everything. So when you look at it, it's the fool literally is holding every bit of every one of the signs. So if you were to label yourself as per se, well, I'm just this. So, you know, I'm just an Aries. I'm just a Taurus. I'm just a Gemini. I'm just this. I'm just that. If you're just that, then you will live the limit, limited life of just being that. If you look at your natal chart, we all have so many aspects of everything else. And that you have pieces of you to connect to, to, to get to know, and to get to know why you behave how you do, how you respond how you do, how other people do. And you get to see this part of yourself. So as we have shifts in planets, as we have things shifting and moving again, as we have another big, if I'm like, I don't know when this is, but I know there's a big freaking solar flare coming. I can feel them. I'm like, I feel like the skies are going to light up like crazy coming up really, really soon. And I just feel like it's like the light show that just like, it's like the fireworks that just makes everyone just go, oh my God. And it builds excitement. It builds momentum because there is, there is beautiful things. There is, there is the momentum that is getting us prepared, getting us ready. And just knowing that, you know, that we can that we can juggle things or that we can we can still be very human and have very human experiences and and just accept our humanness accept that sense of our human we're not going to perfect it we're not going to have it all figured out but that we can access so many parts of ourselves when we learn the power of living from spirit living connected to that soul and letting ourselves be guided like and maybe you're not strong enough to do it, but your soul is your, your spirit. You know, your spirit is the divine is God is whatever you want to call it is greater. And there is, there's this great forces and those great forces are connected to us as well. And so as you move forward with this week, it's a lot, it, that's a pretty big out there kind of information, but your human brings such value to this and your human experiences and your human knowing. And just this week, retrograde is a really good time to sit with your human really good time with love, with compassion, caring for your human. Stop being so hard on yourself. Be kinder to yourself. And when you're kinder to you, you're going to be kinder to other people because how you know how you want to be treated, right? So that's coming back to us. And a lot of self-forgiveness. It feels like just a week of, of finally just like forgiving yourself for 
what you didn't know. You're innocent to things until you know it. Like all of that stuff. There's just a lot of moving pieces, but there is, there is, like I said, this is a week of endings as well. So there is still endings and new beginnings haven't happened, but you're going to, you're going to be like, be able to have this, this knowing of this, of the new beginnings, or you see a new month coming, it's obvious, but you're, but it's, it's this ground zero. So kind of see yourself in ground zero right now of, you know, things are dying, things are leaving, things are falling away. And I don't yet know what's coming, but I can trust the wisdom. I can trust the knowing and that something is happening. And there's just this beautiful, there's this beautiful dance that is happening right now because there is just so much magic to work with. And there's so much magic awakening within us. And there is so many new journeys about to begin. And I feel like for some people, a lot of new journeys, like really taking some major journeys, like journeying through life, like through whether you're doing the healing work, whether you're doing, you know, astral traveling, or whether you're actually physically traveling. But I'm like, I feel like for some of you, that there is going to be big opportunities and like big changes and big events and just like the surprise of a lifetime or the opportunity of a lifetime and you you know being in check with you so that you don't self-sabotage so you don't ruin it so that you don't second guess yourself and you just trust that you're being guided by the soul by the divine the light you are walking with the light the light is walking with you and it's time to allow ourselves to open up to the power of love and let ourselves walk forward with the divine much love have a beautiful week and I will see you again soon. Bye-bye.